OK. Um, so this presentation is about how I left my word processor and embraced ASCII-Doc. Um, this presentation was done in ASCII-Doc, rendered to HTML, and displayed on a Firefox. Okay. Um, so who am I? Um, I was a developer for 12-ish years, um, doing a range of stuff from mobile to embedded to cloud to, I don't know, desktop, I guess. Um, and now I'm a consultant at Red Hat Services. Um, I, I work on uh, cloud, OpenStack, cloud management, uh, and deploying this for Red Hat's customers. Right. But that's all about me. My next slide is about question. Right. Who thinks documentation is really important to a project? I expect everyone to raise their hands. Right. OK. Um, whether it's configuring a HTTP server, whether it's uh, looking up your function calls in Python, or even setting up your own cloud in OpenStack. Without documentation, you're pretty much stuck, right? Um, there's, well, there's, there's thoughts. You could make your API discoverable. You could make th your code uh, easy to read. But at the end of the day, when things go wrong, you look at documentation. Who likes writing documentation? <laughs> Great, I expected that. Right? But we must write. We must write. If we don't write, well, I really like this quote. Um, Nick Coglin is a, a core member of the Python uh, Software Foundation. He's also a red hatter. So this quote is, unless your UI discoverability is really good, saying the feature isn't documented is the same as saying the product can't do it. So, um, how many have seen the, the YouTube clips, uh, kids with old computers? Right, it's, it's really funny, right? Um, if, if you've grown up with computers in the 90s like me, you'll learn that, hey, to turn on a computer, I've got to reach around the back and flick the switch. And the kids don't understand. It's not discoverable. And something that's so second nature to us, right, growing up like this. Uh, we didn't even need do documentation, but kids now, they need to be told what to do. So this kind of adds to the, the, the strength of the argument that documentation is really important. Writing is hard. And I'm going to go through a few uh, bug bears that I find uh, in common word processes, right? Uh, first of all, um, UI elements are distracting. As you can see in this picture, we're trying to write one document, but we've got 50 buttons surrounding a text pane, right? 50 buttons. I don't know about you, but when I start my word processor, the first thing I look at is, hmm, what font size do I want this to be? Um, should my headers be 24, 36, serif, sans serif, right? Are my bullets indented, four spaces, two spaces, and so on, right? Um, I end up looking at how the document looks like rather than what's actually in the content. So um, that's, that sucks, right? Um, in contrast, I love the clean UI we get with uh, our new editors, right? Uh, you can go back to Vim, Emacs, uh, we've got Sublime Text, we've got uh, my new favorite, Atom. Kudos to the GitHub people here. Um, and the nice thing about these editors is they let you focus on the content. Um, there's, a, there's a common sort of UI language here where uh, the main content is in the application. You can make it full screen and focus just on your text and nothing else. I like that. Uh, bug bear too, easy to make mistakes. Who can spot the errors 
in this in this diagram. Go ahead. Oh, um, this one and the title, this one and this, right? So technical analysis for Megacorp and report created for Massive Dynamic. So who's who's seen this before in their own company's documents, right? We've all done that. We've seen it. We've probably done it before, right? Um, and even the title of the document is yet another company. Uh, it's, it's very prevalent. So uh, what I like in SCDoc is, well, we can define uh, variables to substitute throughout the document, right? Minimize errors, automate mundane stuff so that these things don't, don't get in your way. The next thing is outdated references, right? Um, how often have you updated a document, added a new section, but forget to add references, right? Refer to section uh, two for uh, a certain feature, but then you forgot that you added a week later uh, another section that pushes this section down, and then you've got an inconsistent document. In ASCII doc, you can have cross-references and anchors to each parts of your text. Right? The beauty of this is you can have uh, multiple uh, sections and they always refer to the same place. You can have uh, your documents split into multiple files and they still will refer to the same place when you compile them all together. Bug by for copy and paste hell. Um, we've all done it, I'm guilty of it. Um, got five documents, you want to compile it all together for, for a single consumer, right? <coughs> Again, references, wrong all over the place, uh, numberings, all messed up. So, ASCII doc has a nice feature of composition. We can have the combination of uh, macros defined for a document to be spread throughout this document. We can compose several documents together, mix and match, Right. In this case, I've got uh, facts. Facts, which I'll show you later, basically talks about uh, what this document is about, who is it for, who is it written by, and so on. We've got revisions, which you probably can guess from what it says. Uh, we've got preface, we've got uh, the main content, and so on. And the nice thing about this is you can reorder it. And the numbering, on the final document will remain will be nicely done. Right. Another thing I like about ASCII doc is uh, repeatability and customization. This command will work whether it's on my laptop, whether it's on a customer site, or whether it's even generated automatically through some other portal. Right. Um, I think I see at least one of you in the audience who's, who's seen an example of uh, a cu customer documentation written in ASCII doc and created using a make file, right? Um, again, this is an, another example of changing branding de depending on who your target audience is. You might want to have a different logo, right? And all you need to do is change the template. And of course, in, in my case, I, I made this presentation as he doc and I compiled it to a presentation. Okay. So this is the part where I demo. Let's go to here. To create this presentation, I used a, a, a tool called ASCII Doctor, which created a, a, a presentation using, using DEC.js right, from my current presentation .ascii doc. Did you add chat or figure? Oh, sorry. Better? Okay. So just a simple command line. 
for the tool. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using uh, the Atom editor. Uh, it's got a very nice uh, plugin for ASCII.preview. So all I need to do after I write my uh, ASCII doc is press Control Shift A, and it renders my ASCII doc in a window by the side. The nice thing about this is, is uh, well, I can modify it, right? And it's it's dynamic. Okay. So I've got macros as well. This is a, a larger example. It's actually taken from one of my projects. Um, I mentioned just now that there's a fax document for, for every document I generate. Right? Um, in, in this case here, I have subject, description, author, email, and so on. Right? And the nice thing is I can define my source highlighter Right, through, uh, through this tag here. And I can see the style, right, what color scheme and so on. When I do references, now this importing that tag on line 50, that's an example of an anchor and how I get to the anchor is through this. And even right now it's on the same page, but even if it's on different pages, it will refer to the same uh, anchor when I compile it to the full document. So. This make files a little bit more complex, but uh, I'll, I'll just walk through it line by line for you. Uh, the, the first one just creates a simple PDF document using ASCII Doctor PDF. This is a plugin for ASCII Doctor, which generates, well, as you can guess, it's a PDF document. Uh, the, the, the target branded journal is a little bit special because it adds in uh, a custom theme. In this case, it's, it's, the, it's the Red Hat Consulting logo which gets plastered on top and some footers and headers that get added to every page. So I've, I'm making the plain document now. And it generates a plain document, document no, no backgrounds, no headers and footers. And we've got very nicely generated table of contents, all clickable in a PDF. And we can even go back to that link I was talking about. So if I click here, it goes to the right place. So if I mouse over, it says go to page 14. But in effect, whether it's page 14 or page 1400, it doesn't matter because the references have already been created and anchored in the right place. So I'm making the next target now, which is branded journal. This takes in templates from another directory that I've created somewhere else with uh, JPEGs, uh, sorry, PNGs, 
and headers, footers uh, defined in the document. Now it comes up with a very nice professional looking header. You can see the fonts have changed a bit from uh, serif to sans serif. It's a bit smaller, it looks, just looks cleaner now. Right? And all this was done without any change in the source uh, text. It was, just a, it was just a different direction to uh, style sheets. Any questions so far? No? Yes? Ah, okay. So it's a YAML file. It's, it's, it's quite a big file. Um, of course, because this has been customized for the company's styles. Uh, but of if you were to start from scratch, I advise uh, to go with a few, figure out how they work out, or even uh, find some from the web and, and copy and customize them. And uh, I've used custom fonts as well. Uh, SK dot comes with some default fonts. Uh, I've added uh, liberal sense, uh, regular, italic, and bold. Now these, these are actually in my local file system, which I've placed here. And uh, that, that's what makes the, the, the fonts look a bit different from the first one to the second example. OK, so um, I've got a few links. Uh, the, there's actually some books written in ASCII.IM published on, on O'Reilly. O'Reilly does have uh, uh, a portal dedicated to uh, using uh, a couple of uh, text-based formats to publish their books, ASCII.doc being one of them, Markdown being another. Um, and the nice thing about the first link is it's actually, uh, it's not going anywhere. It's, it's actually, uh, the source is all, all on GitHub. So you can actually see how this guy wrote his book uh, in ASCII doc. Okay, there we go. The internet is a bit slow, so I'm not going to go through this. Thank you. This was a very short presentation. I hope you, you enjoyed it. Uh, do you have any questions from anyone? Yep. How is it different from Latex? Uh, I haven't really used Latex that much. Um, but to me, ASCII dot was simple. It was easy to use. Uh, and within Red Hat, it was used across a, quite a number of our open source projects. Um, there's also something else which I didn't mention here called ASCII Binder. Um, ASCII Binder is, is a project meant for managing doc documentation across uh, a large open source projects with version documentation and so on. Um, so I, I think the, the ecosystem around ASCII doc is quite nice. Um, I, I like it. Uh, Markdown is really, I mean, Markdown, ASCII doc, these are the, the, the class of, lang of uh, markups that uh, are e kind of like email friendly, right? Yeah, email inspired. Yeah, email inspired. Where, where Markdown is, what's the smallest thing we can do with exactly. nine or ten features? ASCII doc is like, okay, how do we make books? Yeah. <laughs> and, and Markdown, one of the things I, that, that <laughs> distanced me from Markdown in, in the beginning was, Markdown doesn't do tables uh, in, in the standard Markdown. Um, there's GitHub flavored tables, there's 
nice other flavors. <laughs> the thing is, all the markdowns uh, we keep using and seeing, they all get extenders. Like, we have tables, we have like, we include exactly. we have dynamic stuff with expandable sections, and oh. it's a very rich markdown by yeah. the time we don't. But, but well, we don't make it, but we, you've, we've been looking for things for documentation. Yeah. And yeah. I, was asked, I was told to look at ASCII doc, and one thing that made me not do anything was it's going to be hard to make it dynamic. We have a, we have a unique problem. Mm. We actually have to support multiple different languages as an API from the same API source. Do you mean I18N? Hmm? I18N or programming languages? Programming language. Okay, okay. So they're from, there's a C API, C++ API, JavaScript API, but it all comes from the same class set, the same APIs. So they share some documentation, but right. other bits are language specific. And I have yet to find any documentation thing that works this way. We have to have a little drop down menu say, I want to be in C++ mode because I'm a C++ developer. I don't care about the JavaScript <laughs> stuff. And it'll hide that and show the right things. Uh, I so had that, not found it. That comes up in, I don't know if that's the question, but it comes up in a number of tools that are presenting APIs in browsers where you're, yeah, you're going through documentation. Yeah, but everyone's written something in a browser like a backend PHP yeah. or whatever, I don't know, to do that and generate it. There isn't like a standardized tool. That, so, so that feels like a gap that someone should fill. Yeah, we, we, they, we're going to have to fill it ourselves <laughs> like everyone else. And especially with network APIs, because you mm. can be absolutely certain that the other end of the call will be 10 different languages. So, so, yeah. no. But then, that, well, that's, I'd argue that that's kind of a parallel discussion, because um, that's code documentation. And then there's other types of doc documentation where it's, it's further, I don't know, um, in, in this case, what, what I have is customer documentation where it talks about uh, the overall use cases and, and it's, there's less code involved. Sure, but what yeah. the things we're documenting is, and documenting is API for programmers. Yeah. But it's available in N languages. And yeah. since it shares a lot, you don't want to rewrite all of it. So you want so to that, have that the shared and the language specifics. So that feels like you, your solution would be something like a means of uh, marking a block of belonging Case. We're, we, we're literally basically creating our own documentation system just to solve it, so we haven't found a solution. No we're generating Markdown, and then we're having a whole wiki actually do the rest of it from there. Oh, cool. I'd like to see that. So the idea is you can then go to the wiki and actually edit the common sections they're shared. You can edit the language specific sections and contribute. So your second mm. question was, who likes writing documentation? <laughs> 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 hate writing it. <laughs> but we have to. Yes, thank you. Hello. Who are you? Oh, I didn't know you were here. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so yes, as our Sigma points out, we have about five minutes, which means <coughs> we can continue with the, with the discussion, but is yeah. Michael Cannon in the room? Yes. Uh, is Michael Cannon in the room? Uh, Lev is back here, I don't know where he went. We might have probably more than five minutes. Um, <laughs> continue, it's more than yeah, 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 set up yeah. he's not here, so. Okay. You'd have to write your own tool. Yeah, there's Doxygen is yeah. well, pretty much yeah. the tool for that. Yeah. But it has big downsides as well. We've been using it for years, and we've hit the point at which we're kind of too big, and we didn't spend enough time really maintaining it. So now the mess is so big. Literally, we do make doc, and it takes us about one to two minutes for a mm -hmm. documentation to generate. So I remember spending a day or two trying to fix our documentation. I gave up. It was a cycle of well, does this actually make sure that this section is actually linked in? I've got a link and I can find it. It took me so long to figure it out. I gave up and threw my hands in the air and didn't bother anymore. So, but Doxygen is the only one for that. And you pretty much want to be writing it from the day you start writing your code. It's comments in code. And it's for yeah. C, C++ mostly. I, I, I used Doxygen yeah. quite, many, quite many years ago. Um, it, it worked until, I guess, the, the scale. Right? Yeah. It's a scale problem. At a certain point when you either get big or complex and then you don't really look after it for a while, it becomes a big hairy ball of mess to fix up again. Mm. Um. Does anyone have any oh. suggestions? Or any? 